In this video, we're going to do an anatomical drawing demo. We're going to use Chun-Li from Street Fighter fame to learn how to modify basic anatomy and also add costume details to a figure. We're going to fold in basic constructive anatomy techniques that you might find from Andrew Loomis or other figure drawing books. And we're going to try and combine these concepts. One of the biggest challenges when you're learning to draw is that there's a huge amount of information on how to draw anatomy, which is just standard people. This is important, but it's also important to learn how to modify that anatomy, to draw interesting things, to draw interesting characters, and how the ideas of constructive anatomy or form, primary form, secondary form, tertiary form, how these things relate to the characters and things that we see in the world around us. This demo is primarily going to focus on the static standing figure. And what we're going to do is look at how Chun-Li's anatomy is maybe going to deviate from a standard sort of female pose. And we're going to look at how we structure that and also how we build her costume details and everything around her and make sure that the iconography and the character and the proportion looks right. And we're going to use basic drawing principles, constructive anatomy to do this. This is going to be a fun one, so I hope you'll join me through this you can draw along or just you know take the ideas here and fold them into your own drawing practice anyway let's get started all right welcome to the drawing codex my name's tim mcburney i've been a professional working artist for over 20 years and on this channel we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Again, I normally draw comics and uh, you know my, my style is fairly stylized, so that's the sort of approach I'm gonna be taking today. And what we're gonna do is essentially take a lot of the ideas that you might find from a book such as Andrew Loomis's Drawing the Head and Hands or Andrew Loomis's Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. This is where we think about the form as being full of structure. We try and find the you know primary forms, the secondary forms, and we try and build things in a fairly logical, analytical way. But again, the more you do this, the more fun in my experience you can have with drawing. Because you know I grew up you know reading manga and comics and watching anime and stuff like that. Even you know in the 80s, that stuff was you know starting to come online and it was super fun. And, uh, you know, when I was trying to learn anatomy and, and these things, uh, you know, I, I, I just wanted to draw things like Street Fighter, basically. So, again, that's, uh, that's the point of this drawing lesson, right, is to try and connect up some of these ideas. Just quickly, if you want to learn more about the line and color style, this is, you know, how I create comics, concept art, most of the work that, you know, I create in my working career day in, day out. You can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop to create your own line and color style. You get access to all of the PSDs and brushes and things that you know I normally use to create my work in the quick start guide. Um, that's free, link will be in the description, go check it out. Now I have quite a few additional videos on the channel that you can check out, I'll link them below and they talk about the sort of standard proportions and how we um, find those standard proportions. I also have some on how you can, you know, utilize these same ideas for drawing manga or, you know, um, comics, more stylized versions. But again, the goal here is to look at, you know, who the character of Chun-Li is and, and how we can use constructive anatomy and drawing techniques to, you know, to draw that. And, and uh, you know, we might follow this up with some ones on how to pose the character, how to create a more finished illustration. It's going to be sketchy, but focused on structure. So one of the things we kind of notice is, you know, if we just sort of take the, the standard anatomical um, sort of skeletal mannequin here, Right, and this is very much based on the the Loomis mannequin, and I'm going to sketch this quickly because uh, I have additional videos that go over drawing this uh, in a little bit more of sort of an, an an analytical way. But you know, if we sort of look at you know maybe some sort of standard proportions here for a little mannequin, again we're going to get something sort of roughly like this. And learning how to draw these stick figure style characters is, is super useful. Now, typically when we feminize the mannequin or feminize the figure, we're going to, you know, work on the opposition of the masculinized, masculine, 
masculinized figure. How you say that? I'm not sure. That's probably not even a word, is it? Here we've got the basic idea for creating the feminized figure is that we want to sort of create a slightly larger sort of hip to torso ratio. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be super exaggerated, but this is what will tend to create that feeling of a feminine versus a masculine figure. Right, the masculine figure is going to have that sort of classic V taper, where again the hips are going to appear smaller than the mass of the torso. If you look at the actual skeleton of you know uh, male versus female, it, it is often the hips that will you know define that from an anatomical point of view. But really, there's not that much difference from one person to another. And Oh, arms falling off. The real key here is to understand that this is what you can use to kind of dial up or dial down and control how things look. The more control you have here, the more control you have over the way you represent masculine and feminine figures and how that fits your view of the world. So again, the better you can draw, the more you can control this stuff, the more that you can project your version of the world um, onto the page. But this is basically what we're talking about here, because again, Chun-Li has a fairly um, muscular but feminized figure. So what we typically would see if we were to sort of, you know, take this kind of standard one and sort of make it more uh, feminized is that, again, we're going to look at trying to make that torso, right, which is kind of representing, right, this is kind of representing that, that torso there. Right, and we're gonna, you know, if we make these hips a, a little bit bigger, look a little bit bigger. Again, I'm just being rough here. I'm just sketching around. This is normally how I would sort of, you know, draw this stuff. All right, so trying to draw that. All right, so if we were to sort of feminize that figure we might get something that feels a little bit more like this. And really where you're going to see that is in the sort of waist area, right? That's what's going to give you that sort of typical look, right? And um, the, the system that I'm using here is really just one of primary form. Primary form is where we have our, you know, sphere, cylinder, and cube slash rectilinear forms, right? So I'm trying to focus on those. And normally when I'm dealing with anatomy, a lot of what you get is this kind of drumstick style system, right, where we sort of have a bone, right, that is defining the sort of general direction of a limb or something. And then you kind of have masses of um, anatomical muscle and stuff that sort of tend to kind of attach somewhere there. So I'm really just using sort of a stick and a, a sphere as, as a primary sort of way to rough this in. So again, there you can sort of see that, uh, you know, we've got a got a form that's, you know, looking a little bit more feminized, which is important because that's the first step. Now, what we sort of need to do when we're dealing with specific character and exaggeration and stylization is to kind of figure out what makes up a character. So, you know, the, the, the Chun-Li sort of design that I'm using is, is you know, probably pretty close to, you know, the, the sort of original costume design. Um, again, I'm not sort of super up on the, the minor changes that were made, you know, throughout the, throughout the game. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sort of looking at this type of little thumbnail. Now, I could probably get better reference for this, but sometimes it's good to work with limited reference as well because it makes you think, and thinking is important. So the main things that I see are that, again, we have from an anatomical point of view, she does have, like, you know, a fairly muscular build. Her legs are quite chunky. Right, she's got huge thighs, huge glutes, 
huge um, calves, and you know her arms are sort of pretty pretty muscular. Um, again, in in this in this sort of shot, um, you know sometimes she's represented differently. Again, you know this is where you can play around with it, find your own version, or again design your own character that has you know a similar um, visual iconography or, or sort of um, feeling. The other thing that we can notice is she has um, these kind of uh, quite like her hips are very sort of um, pronounced, right? So. And, and a big part of that is because the sort of costume she has kind of goes up over her, her hips. Um, and it's quite a unique sort of part of the design. So, you know, you'll see there is often that sort of big sort of chunky thigh. And that's separated from the, the hip slash pelvic sort of um, sort of cradle, um, right? This bit. <laughs> so, it, it's sort of seeing this versus the thigh... Is sort of important because the costume sort of comes up over here right it's got that sort of super 80s um uh yeah sort of exercise look um yeah which uh, again you know the sort of high cut um bathers look and uh, you know that's an important part of the design so it, it you're gonna you're gonna emphasize the design and the internal um value structure uh the the way that that costume works by emphasizing those hips right it's gonna be it's gonna be useful to do that Secondly, um, the character has these sort of like a few major spherical objects, right? She has these sort of big shoulder pads style, you know, sort of puffy costume around her shoulder. And she has these um, sort of coverings for her hair right here. And again, those are the main things I'm looking for. So when you're looking at your character, it's just important to, you know, like whatever character you're trying to sort of reference or whatever, it's just important to go through and sort of try and analyze, like, if you understand the basic anatomy, which is why we do that sort of boring stuff, the, the next stage is to, you know, figure out, well, how do I modify that? How do I exaggerate that? How do I make this interesting? And most of the time, we start with a very sort of similar skeleton, right? So I'm just sort of trying to make sure that these hips pop out a little bit more than the torso. That's going to give me a, you know, if I start with that structural basis, that's going to really help. I'm, I'm thinking about where the sort of line of the shoulders is going to be. And typically the, the shoulders, um, you know, are, are going to line up, you know, roughly with sort of the, the hips, right? They're, they're not going to stick out that much more than the hips uh, unless the character has really sort of wide shoulders. But um, again, she is quite athletic. So we're going to we're gonna err on the side of, uh, you know, those shoulders being a little bit wider. Um, and also she has these big um, elements of her costume that come out. So let's try and put... Let's sort of drop a line down the middle. This is going to help us find that sort of center of balance. I'm also going to imagine the sort of S curve of the spine, and I'm going to try and visualize that in three dimensions. And that's going to help me sort of think about where I'm going to place the skull. So that's coming up here, right? Sort of curving around, and then it curves, right? This is sort of behind. Comes up. All right, so it's sort of curving in, all right? Curving in. We're looking at the front. Right, so this is sort of and then it's gonna come whoop, over there and sort of hook back up and then we're gonna have our sort of skull mass that connects up there. So we'll deal with the face and some of those other anatomical details, the secondary forms um, in, in a bit. Uh, you know, I'll do a separate drawing. Here, what we're doing is thinking through the primary forms, right? So what we're sort of trying to find is right. What are the big shapes here that are going to help us? Again, we can block in a bit of that head to kind of help us though. And again, modify as we need uh, but mostly yeah I'm gonna sort of think about where those knees are and, and I'm not really doing crazy poses here let's shift these legs out all right so I've sort of got the center here 
boom, boom, sort of visualize the space underneath the character. And what I'm going to try and do is say, well, that's where sort of the center of the character is. Let's kind of roughly place this other leg. Boom. Right, so it feels like they're planted naturally. I have a whole video on planting feet on the ground if you want to check it out uh, on the channel. Right, and so again, here we can see what I, what I might do, something that I feel like is often sort of quite useful is just sort of put one arm up so we just have a slightly more interesting pose. Again, these elbows are going to yeah, roughly come down to the bottom of that rib cage, right, where the belly button would be. All right, this one's coming down here. We've got a hand mass here, right, just above the knee. And that's sort of giving me the proportional block out, right? So the first sort of thing we want to do is proportion. And most of the time, that's going to be sort of limbs. Um, or, again, the subtle proportion adjustment of torso to hips, right? So the, these primary proportions. Next, what I'm going to do is sort of mass in, right? Primary form. And if we think about what we're trying to do here, we're, we're sort of building this mannequin. And this is something that, you know, Loomis talks about in um, figure drawing for all it's worth. And, and I think it's something that's super important. I've, I've made a bunch of videos on it in the past. And yeah, one, one of the main things that he's talking about here is sort of building a sort of simple version of the figure that's made out of these primary forms that you learn and then you can modify and then you can pose. So it helps you with posing to sort of do it this way. Um, right, and what we're trying to do initially is again, proportion, like the stick figure, the, the skeleton. And secondarily, we, what I do is I think about, well, what are the primary forms of the mannequin that are specific to the character? And this is where, again, my methodology and my sort of advice deviates a little bit from what you would find in the Loomis book, because I think often when we're drawing characters like this, we have to take into consideration as we draw them their costume, because their costume is a major part of what makes up you know, how the character feels. And so if you're trying to pose the character or you're trying to draw the character, it's really important to place the primary forms of the costume as part of the mannequin. So what we can sort of do is start with the anatomy and think about primary forms that are going to separate her. And what I'll do after that is, again, just clean this drawing up a little bit. Once we've done that, I'll, you know, deal, we'll do it again in a little bit more detail, um, a bit larger. And we'll also, you know, I'll share with you a few secrets about how we can use constructive anatomy to help us construct these, um, you know, costume details as well. Still staying pretty sketchy though, right? Again, this is a drawing demo designed to, you know, talk about fundamentals, not necessarily the finishing process. All right, here we go. So primary forms that separate Chun-Li really are these sort of larger thighs to my mind anyway and you might see something different and that's totally fine right it's not about what we f it's not about being right or wrong it's about control and being able to replicate the character so normally when i'm drawing these things i'm not going to draw the bones or anything like that quite as much as as i am here i'm just doing this so it's a little bit clearer for you but we're sort of going to have knees right and what i'm going to do is just try and mass in roughly where these forms would be. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it, it starts to give me a feel as the artist about the mass and the shape and the design of the character, which is important. If I just kind of, you know, try and come to, to this end game by, you know, other means, then that's fine as well. But this really quickly sort of gives me an idea for, look, how, how big is this character right? D does that feel right? Does that feel good? And um, again, the, there are other little bits and pieces that I would be visualizing, but it, it's often these kind of primary form things 
that will kind of help you as the artist to think through this problem. All right. So again, at the bottom of the pelvis, right, we're going to sort of have some sort of form there. We're going to have glutes at the back. Right, but again, just this, I'm sort of checking, right, like, is this line going to work? I think that might work, right? And yeah, we're just going to have these, yeah, and just very, very simple forms, right? I'm not really breaking down the um, secondary anatomical forms. We, we, we might have a go at doing that, and we we'll use some of our reference to kind of extrapolate, because that's another really important skill, is, is sort of saying, well, you know, we don't have a, an anatomical, um, you know, flayed, flayed man or woman of Chun-Li, you have to extrapolate from the reference you have and, and expand muscles and, and look at reference and stuff like that. Put this guy up here. But this is going to start to give us a pretty good indication. And, and also notice here that what, what I'm doing from a, you know, a tools perspective, right? If you think about the tools that I'm using here, really mostly what I'm dealing with is, is just very simple forms, right? I've mostly got sticks and what I'm massing in with again, is just circles, right, spherical objects. Now, it is really useful to be able to visualize the space and the dimensionality of these. So if that sort of helps you, what you can also do is think about what the cross sections of these forms are in perspective. Again, I have videos talking about all these things on the channel as well, if you want to refresh some of that stuff. Put in she does have quite chunky musculature or at least that's how I sort of visualize her right Boom. which I think you know again at the time was was quite unique for um, you know a female heroic figure I feel like these days having you know giant glutes and thighs is kind of in right but uh, <laughs> You know, in the 80s, that was not in at all. Um, so she was quite quite a unique character at the time that sort of Street Fighter 2 came out, uh, at least to my mind. Uh, it certainly stuck out um, in my sort of, uh, uh, sort of childish mind at the time. So there you can sort of see, we're, we're trying to sort of push that. Now you can see that if we look at this little thumbnail here, right, they're, they're going way more, right? <laughs> the, the, this one is like sort of really cool in the way it's, it's, it's sort of exaggerating that. So... Again, here's where you can play with like, well, how big do we make these sort of forms, right? Like how big should they be? Um, and, you know, this is cartooning, you know, this is comics, video games. This is the world of exaggeration. This is where you add interest and excitement by bending the rules a bit. So, you know, you can, you can make them as big as you want. And a big part of this experimentation process is you experimenting with this yourself. Um, I've designed characters and, uh, you know, it, just because you design a character does, doesn't necessarily mean that you understand how it works. Or, you know, um, maybe you draw it from one angle and then you draw it from another angle and you realize, wow, you know, I, I really need to push, I need, really need to push this further than I thought. You can, I, you know, I, I've sort of done one, um, you know, sort of really cool drawing and then it you know takes me another 10 or 20 drawings to figure out what was cool about that anyway we got a pretty good indication here right she's she's got sort of pretty chunky legs we can you know keep making them a little bit bigger we could certainly adjust them to you know um to, to have some better anatomy right uh, you know i'm just doing this in a cartoony way and focusing on primary form but um you know that's going to give us a, a pretty good place to start Next thing is, what are the primary forms um, for the costume? So if we think about this as, right, primary forms for anatomy, what, a, what about, what are the things that actually make a character look like a character? It's often the costume. So we sort of have the, right, these kind of buns of hair. 
right? She tends to have like a fairly sort of delicate face. Right, and, and she does sort of tend to have a quite sort of a, a thin sort of delicate neck, right? That does seem to be something that is um, sort of often put in there. Uh, this one's looking a bit sort of chunky, but again, the main thing here is this, right? And maybe some other things that are gonna sort of come off it, right? You can see that there's, there's other bows and these sort of forms. But from a mannequin point of view, we, we just can represent these as lines, right? Because it's important they're there. And if you're drawing the character and they're moving around, then again, you do need to sort of put those in there because that will actually tell you like how cool the pose looks, right? Um, you know, you can see there's a lot of sort of characters here. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, often makes the pose look cool is, you know, how the costume moves, how the hair is moving. Um, you know, you can see there's some belts moving and stuff like that. It's often that stuff that makes the difference, right? It makes stuff look cool. Um, you can have really good structure, but it's not always going to make the difference. All right. Other thing is obviously these big shoulder pads, right? And again, how big they are is uh, again going to be something you can sort of explore but a good way to explore is to think again about the most sort of basic um, right most basic shapes at play so what we're thinking about with these is that you know they're basically a sphere with a little bit of a cylinder attached to it. That's the primary form. A really good sort of quick exercise, you know, if you're sort of interested for, you know, understanding how to form, like sort of create these forms, it is to just draw a vase, right? So to practice drawing um, like a, a vase, vase, however you want to say it, depending on where you are in the world, right? Think about you know, primary forms that go into little pots and things. Um, and just learning to draw these in perspective is, is a really good sort of little task you can just play around with in your sketchbook. And, then you, and that sort of thing will always sort of crop up and, uh, you know, help you out. So obviously, um, he's got this kind of quite high neckline. But you can see, again, that sort of primary form is right is going to be super important and that you know immediately sort of changes her character now again you know it depends how big you want them to go i haven't made the thighs as big as this and again this is where you learn about character design because you know often proportions right if you're exaggerating you know one thing it, it really helps to exaggerate all things but again you, you can make your own choice there I, i'm just going to stay i'm going to stay pretty conservative right so we're just kind of adding this this sort of form and you can see there's a lot of just sort of general pleasing shapes that get created um, so other things that are going to be you know pretty critical are these wrist spike things <laughs> and again what what they are essentially is just a cylindrical object right that is around the same minor axis as the wrist Right, so we want to sort of think about where the wrist is going. And then we're drawing an ellipse around that minor axis. I also have some you know videos on ellipses on the channel if you want to uh, get better at that. But right, this is kind of what we're dealing with. And we have what do we have on top of those? We have a cone. Right, which is basically a spike is a cone. Now, a good way to think about that is to sort of imagine where, again, that minor axis of the sort of direction of the spike is going. Right, put an ellipse there and then try and sort of draw to that minor axis. Because again, you know, uh, a cone is very similar to, right, if we think about there's my cylinder all right here's my cone same thing and that's why again you know understanding the the the, the constructive anatomy stuff is so important so interesting um you know if, if you 
if you don't draw your ellipses with that minor axis, right? The center line, the axle going through, it's a lot harder to line these things up. So anyway, here we can do, we can do that. I can think about, here's that minor axis, right? And they tend to be, um, yeah, like just a little bit up there. And again, we could make them really big if we wanted to exaggerate. Right, I'm using that. Right, I'm, I'm visualizing this minor axis. We don't always have to draw it in. And yeah, probably don't. I'm just gonna sort of sketch in where those spikes are gonna be, just for, just for fun. But you know, putting in the spikes is probably something you 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 might just do. And this this is this is a small point, but I, I find it it's often these things that will save you from. Um, hours of misery <laughs> is like you, you kind of do need to put the spike in when you're sketching because you you know need to kind of get a feel for what it looks like or you know you don't want to accidentally have a spike you know sort of next to the leg or something and it's going to just it's like oh she's got a giant spike digging into her thigh but you do want to save a lot of this constructive stuff until like getting really nailing it down and until you do a final drawing so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, we, we, we don't want to go too crazy with that because uh, it's very likely that you have to um, change those angles a little bit as you tighten things up. And, and, and there's, what, what you'll often find is that, um, yeah, these, these sort of spikes will kind of wobble around a bit and, and it really sort of ruins the, the solidarity of, of your overall drawing. We might look at a few ways we could sort of, you know, help to construct that. Um, either in this demo or if, if I do some follow-up ones. All right. So again, you can see the primary forms are there. Um, she also has, you know, normally in these things quite a large bust, so we can put that in. Um, put in. Eh, it's probably a bit lower than that. All right. And thinking about where that structure is and yeah normally this kind of white wrap is just underneath there now again you know I don't do a lot of fan art this is the first time I've really drawn Chun-Li um, and, and part of my goal with this video is to you know, um, help you to think through these concepts yourself, right? And, uh, you know, that's why I'm not, you know, it's not like fan art and I'm, you know, I've done this a hundred times, uh, you know, I, I think through these things, this is how I would approach any, you know, any drawing, anything like this, it's exactly the same process. Um, so again, good to think about where the center line is here. And what we can do is try and put in this little sort of loin cloth thing right and as I said I think it often looks kind of cool if um, yeah it kind of dips it kind of like goes up above the hips right so it comes down again the, the different sort of designs change these things um, and uh, you know I, I might I might not be getting the design 100% correct the goal is to think through it. You go back, you look at reference, you figure it out. Um, again, I'm I have very little interest in either myself drawing fan art or you know recommending that you draw fan art. I think that the most important thing is that you create your own characters, your own IP, your own comics, your own stuff. Um, it's a lot easier than you imagine, uh, a lot more fun than you imagine, and uh, I, I think you know studying great character designs that uh, you know you really enjoy is, is a great way to kind of help yourself understand that. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I, I don't do a lot of sort of fan art stuff in, in general. So yeah, so there you go. You, you can see, you know, we, we, I've sort of built it up a little bit and we have those primary forms and, and we're kind of thinking about that in a little bit more detail. So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea for, for how we can go from basic mannequin, basic boring proportion, right? And that would be, again, you know, very similar to your standard skeleton. Not a huge difference between male, female anatomy. We can feminize, we can masculinize um, a figure. Um, we can then sort of think about how to specifically relate that to a specific character.
So let's, um, you know, take that and, and maybe what we'll try and do is, you know, do a, a, a little bit more of a detailed demo and, you know, add some detail here. Have fun with it. Tools for today are some Blackwing matte pencils. I'm going to be using a kneadable eraser if I need to take some back. I have a two stage sharpener that you know makes these pencils a little bit longer and i've uh, you know i've got like a you know normal eraser on the on the back of these the paper that i'm using is some strathmore 400 series smooth drawing paper so this is you know pretty good it's 130 gsm uh 80 pounds um and uh you know uh, pretty pretty sort of good um you know, sort of drawing paper. Again, 400 series Strathmore drawing. Uh, this will allow us to do some pretty good erasing, really hack up the page if we need. But uh, yeah, you know, any tools that uh, you want to use is, is probably going to be fine. I draw on copy paper with standard pencils all the time. These are just nice and black. All right, so lots of different takes you can have on the character. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sort of do a similar thing to last time, but, you know, let's push the um, details a little bit more. Let's see if we can add some of these extra bits and pieces. Think about the construction um, of the character. So I'm going to start by trying to, again, fit the character within a certain sort of proportion. I'm going to, you know, try and create that space. And I'm going to do very similar to what I did before. Right, we're just going to think about a standard sort of pose because again, this is a this is a drawing demo, right? Not like a you know the best cool fan art demo ever. But uh, I do I do want to play around and you know see whether we can uh, you know get do some posing and you know sort of more illustration concepts with the same thing. So let me know if that would be interesting. Same idea, but you know interesting pose. All right. So again, I'm sort of finding these forms. I, I could, you know, try and be a little bit more accurate. Sometimes, you know, in the beginning, but, uh, you know, I, I do find that, you know, sometimes it, it's just important to kind of start and be able to sort of sketch around. I'm going to see if I can make her head, right, yeah, a little bit longer, right, give her that sort of neck. That's a little bit, a little bit longer. Boom shoulders All right think about that torso and yeah let's think about this get those hips out think about dropping that down boom and again where's the perspective ah look there's there's not much perspective but you know let's try and think a little bit about you know if there was a grid Where's it going to be? Yeah, somewhere about there, right? We're going to have our horizon line somewhere around there. All right, let's drop this shoulder a little bit up. Let's drop this one down. All right, again, I'm drawing some lines. Just, you know, draw some lines down. It's almost like a grid, right? We're sort of thinking about it that way. Bump. Bump, bump. All right, and again, I like the idea of you know giving her that sort of wide stance. Feels a little bit more aggressive. Um, makes a you know a bit more of a badass. And uh, again, a good way to do that is just kind of you know rough it in to begin with. Like like I think this is so important. Just you know get get a rough feel for where the vector of that direction is is going to go, and then you know make it a little bit more. Right, add add the anatomy, add the structure. Right, we're going to have the heel of the foot. Boom. And again, we'll go with the same pose. We'll just add a little bit more detail. So let's think about where the arm is going to go up. And this one can sort of drop down. Now, one of the things that you you might actually notice is that the um, you know, the, a lot of the drawings here really have like much, much longer legs than is um, anatomically reasonable if you're studying normal anatomy. Um, and, and that's, uh, again, totally fine. It's often a matter of, uh, again, finding out how you modify this 
basic mannequin to you know suit your needs so I'm you know again I'm playing around with this this idea seems like this head is looking way too small So again, what I want to do is is mass that in. I, I don't I don't want to you know move forward and, until I have a good feeling that that those these basic structures are really going to work. Um, something that is always good to do is is either sort of tilt the page or what I like to do when I'm doing these demos is sort of getting up about above it, right? So that's sort of what you're seeing now, um, and this just allows me to go in there, do a little bit more structure. Just make sure all of those lines are, you know, actually where I need them to be. <laughs> make sure everything's lining up. You can see, like, oh, that hips a little bit, all right? A little bit, a little bit high. All right, are these knees kind of lining up? Yeah, let's get that. Is this actually lining up? Just double check that stuff. And once you're done, you can move it around. Um, back to normal because again when you're dealing with proportion structure it's really easy if you're looking at things from an angle to you know get that proportion off a little bit and then that throws off your entire drawing after that okay so I'm doing the same thing you can see but more with more detail Let's mask this in. Got an ear somewhere. I right again, just mass in roughly where that nose and mouth and stuff are going. I, I'm normally when I do this, I do it a lot lighter, but uh, it's quite hard to see on recording. So I'm drawing a bit darker here than I normally would. I'm being a little bit more sketchy, so you can kind of see that sort of massing in process. Well, and again, there is a lot of st ancillary structure to these hair. Um, coverings all right so again this is this is you know pretty good but you know we we can really you know think about how to sort of modify that anatomy if we need and and this is where again you know another thing that I recommend that's you know a little bit sort of different to, to other drawing teachers is you know to practice your anatomy while you're drawing fun stuff you know, so it's it's really useful to, to have a lot of this information here because, um, you know, I can kind of, you know, see where some of these things might be, you know, attaching, right? We can think about, oh, here I sort of have the, right, that kind of like stomach mound here, and that's going to sort of create some, right, again, we're not going to see any anatomy, but if we were to see anatomy there, you know, we'd, we'd be able to see the six pack or belly button and, and those things kind of in there we're going to have the sort of pelvic area tucks in again you might be able to see the glutes behind there and yeah we're, we're seeing these sort of muscles attach over here and this is where you know you can play around and you know exaggerate right i'm i can sort of think about oh like which, which muscles do get right which muscles are going to get sort of bigger now obviously the you know the the female anatomy especially around the sort of pelvic area is going to be slightly different but um you know not not that different um you, you can get you know female versions of these um right but yeah you know this is going to give us a pretty pretty good indication i'm being super cartoony with this right so you know any any sort of um you know, sort of high-level realistic anatomy teacher is, is going to be saying, no, 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 that's not how it goes. Um, 
but getting but again our, our job is to you know draw fun stuff right so again i'm mainly concerned with sort of what that silhouette is going to be and and how how we might realistically exaggerate and once you sort of get that then you can just kind of do it with a big right with a big sort of chunky um you know sort of shape right so part of this is learning you know you've got to learn exactly where you stand how much do you want to push it how much do you care about this anatomy once you get the general idea you you can exaggerate things a little bit more but also remember part of what we're going to try and do is create fun shapes but i definitely want this kind of right this kind of shape again because remember that that costume is often hanging right above there and again we can you know put that in there and see right you know does that look good does this anatomy sort of work with that and this is what i can what i would describe as construction drawing right we're drawing through you know i'm drawing muscles here that are going to be completely covered up but you know, it gives me a lot of confidence to, you know, exaggerate. It gives me a lot of confidence to, to play around. And it's often that that makes the difference. Okay, so obviously I think, uh, you know, these, uh, these legs are pretty important. And getting the, right, the, the chunkiness right there is super important. Right, so you can see I'm just, I'm redrawing this a bit. All right, that's totally fine. Adjust this sort of thing if you need to. And again, you know, we're not going to take this to a crazy finish. Just kind of sketching around, just learning. All right, we've got some of that costume there. Boom. Boom. right costume there now probably i should flesh out some of these other bits and pieces but it's kind of playing around with this i feel like the legs are such an important part of the character i really want to make sure that they kind of feel right and uh you know the only reason i can kind of do this is because i'm fairly confident in my you know my, my sort of general overall um you know sort of you know how the how the whole thing kind of looks right uh you know if if you're if you're not confident about that then uh you know, it, it is really hard to, um, you know, sort of work on feet and stuff. And, and, that, and that is something that I would recommend, right, is, you know, just sort of stick to the, the things that, uh, you know, like build it up progressively because it is easy if you start fiddling around with feet and then you realize, like, oh, man, the whole pose is off. So, um, you know, I, I, again, I, I, I do think that is something that's, uh, yeah, kind of important to, to, to get right, you know, um, and just keep that in mind. But uh, I think I'm okay. And this, again, is, is one of the advantages of, you know, studying foundation, studying fundamentals, getting all that stuff dialed in takes a while. But, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to just progress through a drawing. Uh, touch wood. I'm not going to have to redo it. haven't made some gigantic mistake. All right, what do we got here? Uh, again, seems to depend on some of the, you know, some of the different costumes have this thing being different sizes. Um, again, I'm going to sort of think about putting in that bust. Oh. And let's see if we can again sort of find the basic form of it for ourselves. Yeah, so I might not get around to time-wise. We're, we're sort of running out of time. I might not get a chance to put all the details of the costume in. Um, but again, you know, the most important thing that I think, you know, you, you should sort of practice is this stuff here. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's rough this in, right? So again, we got the these, 
Again, it's always so important. Just rough them in, get get the mass, get the form going. Right. Right. Are they lining up? How how far above? Right. This kind of shoulder line. Do they actually come? And uh, you know, again, they do have some form. Right, that's not just a sphere, but it's if once you get the the basic form there, you know, you sort of think about and mass that that general form. It's so much easier to then go around and, um, you know, come up with that form, get it right. So you know, if I'm drawing the the back of her uh, dress, I'm going to sort of think about maybe like if she was wearing a, a proper dress that went all the way round, where would that be? Right? How would that look as a as a cylindrical sort of construction? And then, you know, I can just sort of pick out the bits of it that feel like they're going to be behind there. Right? Again, add a little bit of tone there. I know I'm jumping around, but that, that felt like that needed to happen. I'm going to watch my tangents here. Again, just pop that down a little bit. And, and what you can kind of see is that if, if I actually do that, yeah, you can see that. That looks like that's going to come down here. Because if I look at where the front of a dress would be, oh, um, yeah, it's going to sort of pop down here. And all this structure like this is is what will really, um, you know, make your drawings look three-dimensional. Getting all of this stuff right. So again, you know, we might have some, some of those sort of costume details over here. Let's make sure, again, that we line them up, <laughs> make them not look ridiculous. And here, uh, yeah, we can sort of see... Again, I'm just sort of referencing this, and what we want to think about is, again, breaking up this form into separate forms. And, uh, you know, just work through it. So, you know, think about the cylinder here, right? And then think about where we're going to place those extra details and this is where once you sort of start to realize that often costumes are just made up of this that's when you, you might come along and you know start to do some little studies of, of sort of like all oh, right so how do I do that you know how do we how do we sort of break up this how do we how do we create right a cylinder and then sort of just visualize and divide up that cylinder. So you might start by, you know, thinking about these as being sort of separate sides almost of the cylinder, and then you can kind of, you know, maybe play around with breaking them up. I, I'm just kind of, you know, winging a lot of this stuff to be honest. But you know, it, it's it's doing this that will really help you. In a similar way, when we go to draw the the brace, the um, sort of armbands again, it, it's going to be the same story. What you're after. Are these ancillary construction lines right so similar to how I did this right I've sort of got my cylinder I've got my right center line where the wrist is going to go through now I've got these spikes that are going to come out but where do they come out well again what I can do is try and draw like a larger line Right, like this imaginary, we can imagine this is a see-through line. And then what I'm going to do is draw lines out. And if anyone has watched my sort of tree tree drawing videos, you'll notice this is almost exactly the same thing that I would do right, for drawing tree roots. Boom. Here we can now construct and understand. Because if we were to look at that from above, what I'm doing is saying, well here's the bracelet, right? I need I need these spikes coming out of it. But if one spike comes out there, right, it's very easy for me to just boom, boom, boom. Right? Imagine this line. So this is an imaginary line, right? This is real. <laughs> the these are kind of the centers of right of my spikes. And 
now. Alright, I can do that. And that'll actually help you do it if you're doing it two-dimensionally. But it will also give you, you know, at least somewhere to start. I mean, this is very rough. I, 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 would, I haven't done a super accurate job with this. But, you know, you, you can see that the simple structures um, will really sort of help you when it, when it comes to adding, adding this detail. All right, so let's rough in where... where a hand might go. All right, let's think about All right, some... musculature there. Hopefully I've got that proportion right. Now if this stuff starts to look wrong, it's normally because just the, the, the basic proportion is wrong, right? So again, I'm going to make these pretty chunky. And I'll try and add that construction and just sort of show you what I'm talking about there. Right. So again, I've got I've got a pretty good idea of where this is going, and because I've done this a few times before, right? Um, I'm just visualizing. And off so often with drawing through, what you what you're having to do is hold the construction right in your mind. So. In many, many cases, especially when you get into advanced construction, you're drawing cars and stuff. What people find is that, you know, if you kind of blink, you kind of lose the feeling of like, wait, what, wait, what, where was I? <laughs> which, which line was going where? Let's get a bit of a sharper pencil there. Right, which, which line was going where? What, what was I doing? Um, so a lot of it does require you to know what you're doing and to you know be able to kind of hold it in your mind and be like this line is this thing and oh there i got it right yeah i kind of connected all the dots up and, and it's very easy to kind of lose it right so you know halfway through you're like oh man i have no idea i have no idea what what these lines mean you just got to step back ha have another go at it um yeah this arm is kind of ending up in no in no person's land See if we can get it back. So again, that's there. So we're gonna have like sort of a hand, hand sort of roughly there. Try and rough in a little thumb. Right, bump. And again, same thing, right? I'm gonna draw that ellipse. Right, got my got my thingy, and now I'm gonna Right, try and visualize where these are. I'm gonna draw like the right, draw like the shape of that spike there. Right. And there we go, there I've lost it. I was like I was talking, I was talking too fast. Came back and I'm like, whoa, what are all these silly lines? It's just part of the job. Occupational hazard. Um, so yeah, that one looks a little bit, a little bit wobbly. Let's make that straight. Come on, Tim, you can do it. Bump, bump. So again, that's kind of, it's kind of okay. Now, would there be maybe a little one over here? Yeah, maybe might look cool. There we go. All right. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm sort of trying to, I'm trying to look at like how the, how the costume goes at goes at the front. Might not have time for that one sort of today. Might sort of play around with that. Um, sort of another time. All right, might have some costume details here. All right. And Again, some sort of stuff here. Yeah, it's all a matter of just, you know, mapping the, right, like mapping the space, right, understanding the space, understanding where, you know, lines are, are going to wrap around, come up, come down, etc. Um, got some, right, things on the side. And yeah, then we can think about, got some earrings. Right, little earrings there that probably again it's often these things where you come to the end and I'm like oh yeah 
earrings. That, that makes a huge difference. So again, not, not going to go sort of crazy with the with sort of the face. Looks like I probably need to add more. There we go. So just kind of winging it. Now, similar sort of thing here, right? Right, we can just sort of think about a, a wave structure for those. It'd probably be something we could could break down a bit better if we were to do a portrait sort of version of it. But yeah, we got some of these. Oh. And see if we can put these over the top. Again, draw through. Oh. Some are going behind, All right? You could make them flying everywhere. Um, again, you know, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, you know, that's the that's the basic idea of how we would sort of, um, you know, structure this. We're trying to use constructive anatomy to 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 build this up as we go. And uh, you know, the next step is is not insignificant. You know, like really kind of adding adding a lot of uh, you know detail and, and, and structure to things um, that would certainly you know take a while be very important um, and of course glossed over a few little details here and there but hopefully this one has been useful see uh, you know whether you can have a go at this yourself you know you could break down this character a different character um, you know like what whatever whatever you want uh, let me know if you've got any questions or things you would like to see in the future maybe different characters we can break down um, but yeah, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.